Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Micah and today I am going to be talking about my makeup wish list. So I'm going to take you through some of the things that are on my wish list that I haven't mentioned before. I just thought that, that would be fun and to talk about why I'm interested in looking into that a little bit further. Just because it's on my wish list doesn't necessarily mean I'll also end up buying it. It's just for me like a list to keep track of things that I like. So um, I have my laptop right here um, because that's where I keep the list. It's like a running list. I just adapted. If I've purchased something or I'm no longer interested in it, I will take it off the list and I add things on as we go along as I see new things that I would like to try. When you're watching this, I'm about to go on a trip to London and I love to buy makeup when um, I'm traveling, but I try to focus on brands that I can't also get at home. Um, so I've decided that, uh, and I've decided this actually quite a long time ago, that I would very much like to try the Hourglass Vanish Foundation. Now I'm not sure because that new liquid foundation just came out and I'm hearing lots of mixed reviews. So I'm not sure whether I want to go for the stick foundation, which is initially what ended up on my wish list, or whether I should go with the newer one. I'm not sure yet. I have no clue what shade I am in Hourglass, but I have a couple of products by theirs that I really, really like. I love their ambient lighting powders. I've got a couple of blushes. I have a face powder. I have a bronzer. I've got some of their highlighters. I love Hourglass as a brand, so I thought it was time to branch out and try something differently. So that's why I want to try their foundation. And I think I'm just going to have a look in store, see which texture I like best. The Hourglass powder is one that a lot of people are raving about as well. And I've read online that they actually do like travel size minis, which are like, I think like somewhere around the 16 or 20 euro mark. You get half the size or maybe like a third of the size, but I have quite a lot of loose powders that I'm still like looking to try. And I thought I could add this one to the to try a pile uh, because it's a powder that a lot of people seem to be loving. So I'd like to try that too. Something that's been on and off my wish list for such a long time is the Kevin Aquan contour powder because so many people like it. I already put this on my wish list way back in the day, like I'm talking like four or five years ago. Um, but at the time they only had the shade medium uh, because it only used to come in one shade and I knew that that would be too dark for me. But the reason why I'm sort of umming and ahhing about this product is now that it comes in a lighter shade, I'm very happy that it does, but I no longer really contour that much. So I'm not sure whether I should actually purchase it because I might as well be stuck with quite an expensive product that I don't really use because I don't really do contour anymore. So maybe that's something that I just need to put on the back burner for a while. And by the time I do start contouring again, I can always purchase it. I've also heard people say that it's not all that. So that's also making me a little bit more skeptical. One thing I would definitely be purchasing when I'm in the UK is a Fenty highlighter. I made a uh, video not too long ago where I discussed some brands I want to try in 2019 and Fenty is one of them. Fenty is not for sale at any stores here. I can definitely only get it online. I think I want the one in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal, but now that I know that I'm going into a store, I will be able to see the full selection and I can uh, have a look at all the different shades that are doing and decide on that. The new Fenty concealer is something that I put on here because I might as well check that out. However, I've heard that a lot of the Fenty base products are more for like oily skin because they are very mattifying and I don't think it's really my cup of tea. It's the reason why I've never tried the foundation for instance and why that's not interested and not on my wish, uh, why that's something I'm not interested in and why that is not on my wish list because I just know it will be too drying for me. Um, but I would still like to look into the concealer if, I, if they have it there and I'm at the counter anyways. I might as well give it a swatch and see if I like the texture. Some of the items that I have on my wish list as well that I may want to get when I'm in London, but I'm not sure yet, is some Charlotte Tilbury, but I can get Charlotte Tilbury right here in the Netherlands. It's not something that I have to buy while I'm there, so I may want to like push it back a little further and just buy it here. I really want to try one of their blushes, but so far the shade selection they had didn't really interest me. And then they, re uh, they uh, released the Pillow Talk blush, and that is one that I would very much like to try. So uh, I really like the Pillow Talk lip liner and lipstick. So what? why not also try 
that blush. I would also still like to buy two of their uh, matte formula lipsticks as well. Uh, Very Victoria and Lost in Cherry are both on my wish list as well, but Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks are just something, you know, I only buy like one thing, maybe like once a year <laughs> because they're so expensive. So this is definitely something that I don't think I'll be purchasing anytime soon, uh, but I sort of put it on the list to look into when I'm in London, but I don't think I want to. I think that I've got an hourglass foundation and a Fenty highlighter that that's pretty much my budget for luxury makeup done. So that's the London trip, but there are some other things on here and a lot of them are eyeshadows, which if you see my eyeshadow palette, Dick Lauder, you know I've got, I've got plenty of eyeshadow palettes. I don't need any more, but I really want to try some more indie brands this year. That's another thing I mentioned in my makeup I want to try in 2019 or brands I want to try in 2019. So Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute is still on here. The Saucebox Nocturne palette, that seemed to be the one that they offer that appeals to me the most. Um, Menagerie Cosmetics, their Feral palette looks really, really cool. Um, and I would very much like to try the Slush palette by September Rose. So yeah, I think that Se September Rose will be a brand that it's easier to get for me because they're based in the UK, so I won't have to pay like customs and exorbitant amount of shipping, which I will probably have to do with the other ones because they're all in the U in the US or in the in Canada, I believe. So we'll see. Um, another pa a couple of palettes that are still on my wish list is BH's Royal Affair. I did a, a video not too long ago where I talked about some new newer palette releases and talking about whether I would want to buy them. This one is definitely on my wish list. Sugar Pill is definitely also still on the list. This this is again one of those things that has been on my wish list for absolutely years. I remember already wanting to buy Sugar Pill when they still did the quads, like the Burning Hard quad was one that I really wanted to get, but at the time I was just getting into makeup and I wasn't really into color all that much. Uh, it made me a little bit nervous. And now that I feel a little bit more confident wearing colors, I definitely want to try some Sugar Pill because so many keep, people keep saying that Sugar Pill is like one of the absolute best brands for colorful eyeshadow. The only problem is that a lot of the shades that I really liked have been discontinued because Sugar Pill is apparently revamping their eyeshadow line and they should be releasing new shades. So I think I want to sort of like hold back a little bit and uh, wait for them to do that. An eyeshadow palette that so many people seem to love, but that you know, like I just I just didn't even know it was out there. Um, but that's the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts eyeshadow palette. I was not really drawn into this palette, to be quite honest. It just seemed like another warm tone palette to me. And then I actually spotted it in store a couple of months ago. Um, there's a little makeup store in my old hometown and they sell all of these like, well, quite a few of these brands that we can usually only get online. Since I no longer live there, um, I don't really get to see what they're, they have on offer all that much anymore, but I was there over the Christmas break. I popped in there and they had this palette there and there was like one shade that just blew me away and I was like, uh, maybe I should just look into getting this palette. So now it's on my wish list. We'll see if I ever purchase it because the rest of the palette doesn't really appeal to me and I'm not sure whether I should buy an entire palette just for one shade. Seems a bit excessive, right? So we'll see. I also have some Benefit products on my uh, wish list. Benefit is one of those brands when I first started in makeup because they sort of like sell sort of a whole aesthetic that I was very much down with. I used to have so many products by Benefit, like especially when my makeup collection just fit into like a little makeup bag. I think like 75% of my makeup collection was Benefit. Uh, over the years, I've definitely tried other things, but they've come out with a new foundation called the, what's it called? Hello Happy Foundation. And that sounds really intriguing to me. I'm not sure why I haven't heard any hype about it. I, don't, I haven't heard anybody raving about this, but it seems to be a kind of foundation that might uh, uh, work for my skin. So I think I might want to try it. Again, something I want to look at when I'm in the UK because I'm, I suspect that they might have a better shade range there. Uh, one of the reasons why I haven't tried a lot of base products by Benefit is because the shade range that we get over here in the Netherlands is absolutely atrocious. Um, and then we have their Boing Airbrush Concealer. Erase Space is one of like my go-to all-time favorite products, but mine was so gross and so old that I had to get rid of it. 
and I still have a little bit of corrector left in my Bobbi Brown little correcting pot, so I would like to repurchase the Benefit version, and the new version, like Erase Paste, has been changed into the Boing Airbrush Concealer. So I do want to try that um, to see. I've heard it's not the same as Erase Paste, but I do like Erase Paste better than my Bobbi Brown one, so I definitely do want to look into it. I think the shade of the Benefit one is a little bit better for my skin tone. Just a couple of things that I have no clue. This is like very, very long term because for some of these products, I would have to travel to the US in order to be able to buy them. So Flower Beauty is a brand that all of the American gurus are raving about. I've heard, I've seen some UK people now talking about it because apparently it's uh, available from Superdrug, but it seems to be online only in the UK for now. So I'm not sure whether I'll be able to find it, um, but it's also sold at Ulta and at Walmart, I believe. So I may have to just book a trip to the US sometime soon, I'm not sure. Um, and then the Sephora Pro palette, that editorial brights palette that they were doing, uh, was that what it was called? I think it was called like the editorial prep palette with like a bunch of duochromes and bright shades. That has been on my wish list for more than a year now. And ever since it was pretty much out, I'm not sure if they still do it. Um, I mean, I can't even get onto the US website anymore, so I'm not even sure. Uh, and the European Sephora stores don't sell that, so we'll see. Uh, Laura Geller is a brand I would like to try more by. I have their duo highlighter with like French vanilla. Is that what it's, what it's called? Like the bake highlighter, French vanilla and Portofino. And I really, really like that product. So I definitely want to try one of their swirl, gelée highlighters as well. They seem to seem to have extended that shade range. So there's probably now a shade for me in there too. J Cat Beauty is something I hear a lot of people talking really, really good things about so I would like to try they have galaxy eyeshadows that look really nice and sparkly and glittery and intense those look nice and they seem to do really good highlighters too we'll see I don't I've never even seen a J Cat Beauty product before in my life so I have no clue it's just going by what some of the youtubers that I follow say it should be good stuff um and then the Natasha Denona gold palette is also on this list I've heard so many people raving about this palette and I've seen some people do looks with it that I think are absolutely stunning. It's just that I have a Natasha Denona palette and I'm not using it a whole lot because the formula is not my favorite um, and it's a very expensive purchase. So I'm still very much on the fence about that one. Um, again, it's probably going to be a, uh, a thing where I'm just going to have to look at it in store and swatch it and feel it before I decide to purchase it. But like I said, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to go on a trip to either France because I believe Frank Sephora now sells Natasha Denona. So I'd either, ha either have to go to France or to the US before I can even glance at this palette. And before I look at it in real life, I don't think I want to commit to buying a $129 palette because those are expensive. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and that you liked hearing me talk about what makeup I have on my wish list. Let me know in a comment down below what makeup is on your wish list. And in the meantime, I would very much appreciate it that if you like this video, if you could thumbs it up because it helps getting my videos out there. And if you'd like to see more videos by me, I make new videos three times a week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And if you would like to see those, then you should just subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. Because if you do that, then you will always be updated when I post new videos. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye!